Okay, hey everyone, 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins here. Tropical update for potential tropical cyclone 18. Uh, we've got that down in the Western Caribbean. We also have this one little way that we'll be watching in the south, well, Turks and Caicos, the southern Bahamas. Very small chance for this little moisture you see here moving off towards the west and developing. And then we've got Patty that is way out there. And obviously, Patty is not a big deal. So let's go. Let's talk about our system in the Western Caribbean. It's small. You can see it way down here. And Recon went out there today. That's the reason why we know uh, that it looks like it's starting to organize. 35 mile per hour winds. You can see the Recon went out this afternoon around 3, 4, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. The winds right now are 35 miles per hour. Pressure is 1,004 millibars, and it's moving to the north at 7 miles per hour. Now, the deal is they named it a potential tropical cyclone because that allows them to issue watches and warnings. Jamaica has a tropical storm warning, and the Caymans, this is Grand Cayman, that's the Little Cayman, that, those islands, two islands there, uh, all three of those have a hurricane watch. because We might get up to around 70, 75 mile per hour winds and near 80 by the time it gets to western Cuba. So here's the 7 p.m updated forecast from the hurricane center and what you want to know here is that it starts out with 35 now and by tonight we could have tropical storm Raphael. that's the next name on the list and then tomorrow afternoon 45 mile per hour winds 60 tomorrow night into tuesday at 70 by midday tuesday and then 80 mile per hour winds by late tuesday night early uh wednesday morning that's what it's approaching the western tip of cuba now here's the good news for us at least is the current forecast does keep the center well offshore of Tampa. In fact, I think it's going to be a small system. But wind shear is going to be a big issue on this. And that's going to determine where the weather goes with this. But this cone that you see here really is where the center of that storm will go. You may have the center here, but if you've got wind shear from the east, you're going to have a bunch of the, the weather getting blown off towards the east. Right? The wind's coming in from the west. It'll blow over the center, and a lot of the clouds and rain will go over in that direction. That's not Milton. This is not... Helene, this this is probably not even Debbie. Okay, so let's let you not worry too much about that. And you can see the extended forecast does take it further off to the north and the west. And here's the key: it weakens it. Okay, notice 80 mile per hour winds late Tuesday night, Wednesday, then Wednesday afternoon, 75 mile per hour winds as it gets into the Gulf. 70 by Wednesday, or well, that's Thursday. Friday, 60 mile per hour winds. So it's weakening. As it moves across the Gulf waters, and I'll explain that coming up. Here's a look at the forecast models. They all say the western tip of Cuba, at least most of the forecast models. You can see that. And then they kind of pause it a little bit, or at least slow it down a little bit by, this is really Thursday afternoon and evening, but west of Tampa, right? And then they turn a little more into the north and the west towards Louisiana. Remember, it's weakening the whole time that it's doing that. Okay, so again, I don't even think, you know, the Gulf Coast is not looking too bad with this one, but we, we have to watch it. Now, that's Grand Cayman right there. Well, that's actually in between the Cayman Islands right there. Grand Cayman here, Little Cayman, and the other little island are right next to it. Um, those yellow colors there, that's tropical storm force winds of 40 miles per hour or higher. It's a small system, all right? Now, watch as we get towards Cuba. This is Wednesday morning. Maybe tropical storm force winds in, in the orange you see there. I mean, uh, 60 mile per hour winds basically in the orange there and maybe some hurricane winds right near the center it would be small that's the current forecast but look how far away this wind field is from the tampa area okay so at that point that would be wednesday evening the tropical storm force winds are almost 200 miles away folks now why is this happening well down south in the western caribbean very warm air very warm water especially right Systems here, comes up towards Jamaica, turns here. That whole track has lots of warm water. But look at the Gulf of Mexico. It's really cooling, especially up and down our coast. The colors here are showing 80 degrees or higher. You can see the loop current coming up here, and it comes back down through the Florida Straits and then goes up the coast. That's the Gulf Stream, right? But when it comes here, it's running into some drier air, cooler water, a little bit of wind shear, and even more cool water as it moves off to the north. So that is essentially one of the reasons why it's expected to weaken just a little bit as it's moving to the northwest now it runs into this loop current it's not going to weaken a whole lot over top of that and the forecast models tend to have it somewhere out in here too so that would be wednesday thursday time frame uh, and then it tries to do something like that
All right, now let's talk wind shear. Wind shear basically just blows the tops of the storms off, okay? And so what happens is you end up with that little circulation right there at the center. You see it on the satellite, but all of the big storms in the rain are off to the right or wherever the wind's blowing them, right? And that's what I'm showing you here in the color. So let's stop it at Tuesday, and you can see there is a little bit of wind shear out ahead of it, right, out here, but there's not a whole lot right over the center. And so because of that, during this period, it's going to try and get a little bit stronger. That's why they have it towards a hurricane to this point. All right, now let's get it into the Gulf. Look at that. At least initially, there's some southwesterly shear. That means wind blowing from the southwest to the northeast. Late Wednesday into Thursday as it gets into this area. That's going to blow a lot of the weather with this, at least the high clouds especially, off to the north and the east. Right? So it's not going to be one of these perfectly round storms once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, some wind shear is going to get on it. And then as it moves further to the north and the west, eventually uh, the wind shear kind of backs off as it's moving to the north and the west. But this shear you see here will not. I don't think it goes anywhere. So if it does end up out here and it does end up towards eastern Louisiana, Mississippi area, it's really going to get sheared apart as it's making landfall, which will really weaken it. Okay, so even in the southern Gulf Coast states, right, it just does not look like it has a chance to get too strong. Now, this is probabilities for tropical storm force winds. Remember, 40 miles per hour or higher. Okay, and you can see where the Hurricane Center thinks the highest chance of this, 70, 80 percent chance, is way out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, you see by Tampa, if we were to see it, it would be Wednesday at 8 p.m., but our chances of seeing tropical storm force wind, 40 mile per hour winds or higher, is 3% at this point. Now, this will change. This usually does. It's even hard to use this number now because it changes so much. But this is what you want to notice. They think the track is out here. They think the best chance for any of those high winds would be offshore. Now, this is not Cat 2, 3, 4, right? When we had Milton come in at us, we had Helene come by as a Cat 3, 4 out there. That gave us the surge. That was about 100 miles offshore. This would be much further away. Uh, it's still way too soon to figure that out, but you know, you're know you talking over 200 miles. And we're not talking a whole lot of wind. The more wind we would have out there, the more water it could push to us as far as surge goes. Right now, I don't, I don't it, this is not a Helene surge, okay? This is not a Milton surge, right? I, I think we're good as far as that goes. There will be some higher tides and we'll get some surf rolling in but I don't think it's a huge deal for it. But that, that, those details will come. Now, let me show you a forecast model we have here at the station. It's called the graph. And then we call it future cast, right? And you can see where the end of this red line is where the Hurricane Center thinks it is. Our forecast model thinks it's a little bit further to the east. All right, that's Monday evening. Now, let's go out to Tuesday morning and then over to, that's about 9 in the morning. Our model's here. Hurricane forecast is here. Pretty good agreement there so far. We're still a little to the east. Now, as we go through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning, our model doesn't turn to the north and the west as much. It takes it more across central Cuba, which will knock it down a little bit, weaken it. Hurricane Center still has it back down here, along with, by the way, most of the global models, although some are on the right side. But that's Key West right there. So they would have a little bit better chance of seeing tropical storm maybe a weak hurricane if this one comes through. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because this is Wednesday morning, Hurricane Center out here, our model's here, it's not that far off, but look what's happening already. The wind is shearing this thing already. Look where all of the, the, the red is, the oranges, the yellows, all the convection, all of the rain. Here's the center. You don't see it wrapped around here. You see it all out here. And that's because of that southwesterly uh, wind shear. Right, so the system's already starting to weaken at that point. Now the devil's in the details at this far out, but you get the idea. Now for us locally, this type of thing would mean some heavier downpours, and yeah, that would be a tornado threat right along the immediate coast, especially. But if the center's out here, then we probably don't get much of that. Okay, and again, just to get tropical storm force winds would be tough to do here. We could, we could get them certainly with gusts in some of these bands. But that's if this model was right. And this is during the day on Wednesday. That's around 1 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. Uh, you see the center stays out here. Sheared center at that. So it'll be a weakening system. Now here's the GFS forecast model. And you have the other one right there. So it's 
very similar to the Hurricane Center. You can see it gets a little bit closer to us, like the graph model I just showed you, our future cast. That's Thursday. And then it does go to the north and west towards the Panhandle. So that's a little bit to the right of what the Hurricane Center has. Um, I also want to point out this little area right here. There's a 10% chance we get development here. Watch what's happening over here. This is Friday. That's Saturday night into Sunday, and it has a weak wave coming through towards South Florida. This is that 10% chance for developing coming this way, and then pushing across South Florida Sunday, Sunday night. And eh, maybe trying to weakenly develop. I, I'm not worried about that one at all at this point. All right, European forecast model. Let's take a look at that. Here it goes. It's a little bit further to the west. Okay, you can see it went over the western tip of Cuba, not out here like the other two models. Um, and most of the heavy rain, again, sheared off to the north and the east. See where the center is? See where all the heavy rain is? Not wrapped around the center. And that's because of the wind shear on it. Well, let's go out a little bit further. This is Thursday. There's the center well offshore. There's the rain. See, the wind shear. And that is a very weak system, guys. And then this is Friday. In fact, we actually start to dry things out. Uh, and get We'll continue with basically east to southeast winds all the way through it. Uh, this is Sunday, that little wave down here. Not really closing a low off here, but it does drag the moisture across the Keys in South Florida and perhaps try and do the same exact thing again by a week from Tuesday uh, with, with some tropical moisture coming in. So bottom line, if you're looking at this model, we should be 81 for a daytime high. We're going to be in the mid-80s, and it's going to be humid. I do points. It's going to feel like September out. Right? And we're missing some of the best time of the year. Some of that weather, I mean, ah, it sucks. But I think once we get this out, we'll, we'll switch the pattern by the middle of the month and we should be done. Uh, this is looking out through the 15th and it says uh, less than 20% chance of development in this area. Um, look at that CAG, CAG. It's basically an area of low pressure that sits right here. And it's a gyre, what we call it. And Central American gyre. And every now and then it can spit out something like what it's trying to do right now. Um, but you can see this is a 20% chance or less down there. So that, is, or a little greater than that, but not 40%. Uh, Good news as far as that goes. All right, let's see. One other thing here, guys. Believe it or not, it is about 25 days or so since Milton came through with all of the things that are brought through, but especially the rain. And the Withlacoochee at Holder, this is northern Citrus County up there, Levy County, is just now starting to crest and drop. Looks like it's dropped an inch or two. So that really didn't peak until about a week or two after the storm, but it's been high for a couple of weeks. And now it's finally starting to come down. So oh, those poor people still have water in their houses up there. I mean, that's very high water too. All right, uh, don't forget all my social media platforms. You can follow me right there. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday evening. This one I'm not too worried about, but you do want to pay attention because if this track does get a little bit closer to us, we'll have a little bit more rain. We'll have a small tornado threat as we get into Wednesday and Thursday of this upcoming.